Well, the working waterfronts are slowly disappearing. There still are two boat yards on the creek in Cambridge, but there used to be four and, and other watermen's businesses too. They're slowly going away. Yeah, and now we have condos. Used to be probably almost a dozen seafood uh, processing type facilities here and we're the only one left on the Cambridge Creek. When I grew up there was just no concern about access to the waterfront because there were so many watermen here and it was basically a waterman's town. We had been going in a development pattern where an awful lot of waterfront was being lost to condos and private use. It's difficult to own something that is going to give you access. Yeah. And at the same time, some of the stuff we do is loud, and so it may not be nice for neighbors. Spring of the year, it was a lot of people working on their boats. In the fall, they were bending the sails on the skipjacks and getting things ready. And, you know, there's always something going on on the waterfront. It's a lot more quiet nowadays. What you're looking at in Cambridge is a deep water port. We don't have a lot of those here in Maryland. It is the second largest port in Maryland. We had uh, Bumblebee Tuna here. That was a big business. That's gone. And uh, Icelandic both agreed to move their businesses here, but they needed the port. And so we formed a group of people from the watermen in the area that would unload the ships. Down inside the ships, truck drivers driving them back and forth to the plant, and you know, people unloading at the plant, and then the whole processing system inside the factory. My father actually worked at the port unloading tunas. If it had not been for being able to operate more efficiently down in Mexico, I don't think they ever would have left. The watermen are extremely resilient. I mean, they've been through tough times for generations. I don't know how they do it sometimes, but they, they just keep on keeping on. You know, it's a grind. I work at it hard six days a week. The working watermen are dedicated to their trade, and they have hearts of gold. You can't just box them up and send them away. They've got to have something that's available to them. There are a lot of guys with boats out there, but they struggle to find places to dock them, and the prices are high, so they need to work on that. They can't crowd them all out. I think it complements each other, really, because the people that come to live here like that activity. You know, they say watermen never retire, they just die, and I'm looking forward to hopefully a lot of years left where I, you know, go out there each day. Yeah, it's a great tradition we have here. It's great pride and rights for Maryland. I feel lucky that I got into aquaculture in Maryland when I did, because it's really like an industry that's taking off, and it's full of innovation, it's full of some nuts like me, it's, it looks like it's gonna attract bigger uh, companies. Uh, Maryland is like the greatest protein factory we have in the country. We have this incredible watershed and all this algae and that's exactly what the oysters eat. I think a lot of it's lack of understanding. I think if, you've, if you haven't been around it, it's hard to understand what conveniences and inconveniences come with local seafood. The Chop Tank River and the Chesapeake Bay, I mean, it's two of the, the most awesome bodies of water that you could ever sail on uh, or just cruise on. Our actual town of Cambridge was developed on the water industries. Through being on the boats, I had a desire to work on the boats, so I went to work in a boat yard. It's where I am comfortable, uh, hanging out in the commercial boat yards there, where watermen are allowed to do their own work. When you work on boats, you work on boats for watermen. Through working on the boats, you get to know them, you get to know their families, and you get to know what they do. You've also got the component of pleasure boating, and that is an area where we really have the facilities to increase our economic activity. In Maryland, working waterfront has evolved, and it's a lot about recreational boating and recreational uses. The harbor itself is a harbor of safe refuge, and there are tourists that do use it. Sailboats come in, and they patronize the downtown restaurants and stores, but that's just a trickle to what it could be. Just did this expansion eight years ago, helped draw more boats. We have big groups that can come now. There's no denying that the Top Tank River brings an incredible amount of revenue to Cambridge, and it's just a trick to how do you how do you tap onto it? With the town being revitalized and creating more jobs and more more store frontage, it's actually drawing more boaters into this community. There's nothing cooler than pulling your boat up 
docking it and being able to walk here. If we're lucky enough to establish a port where larger boats pull into, the trickle down is going to be enormous. There will be tourism dollars. So this is a huge opportunity that Cambridge has. This is an opportunity to bring recreational boating, um, larger boats, back into the bay. There are a lot of people that came here specifically because they wanted a waterfront town. They've come into our marinas and they've wound up purchasing houses. So from pleasure boating, we have gotten an awful lot of citizens. had a rich tradition in boat building. You go down some of our streams and creeks, you would actually find boat builders back in the 17 and 1800s. Plus, we had the source of wood. I like old stuff. That's why I work on these old skipjacks and work boats and stuff. It's all about the creative process in solving the problems, which exist continually through the construction period of a yacht or a boat. The problem with these old boats, especially these old skipjacks, they're all wood. We don't have the people to work on them. Some of the beams in this boat weigh a ton for to be handling, and people don't want to do this. How difficult it is now for younger people to get into the trade. Very few people can afford to get into it anymore. So they're concerned that their, their culture and their way of life is, is dying. Well, you know, we have a lot of assets here that uh, are in danger of slipping away cultural-wise. If people get together and tell our stories, then actually we preserve our stories. Uh, I think that this is good potential for Cambridge uh, to develop this heritage tourism. For watermen to tell their story directly to the visitor, uh, because if they don't, chances are someone else is going to attempt to tell their story and they probably won't get it right. These guys learn to do some of these things and, you know, take a little pressure off of the resource because they're making a little money doing something else. Heritage tourism is a supplement for most of us commercial fishermen. We don't want to just be tour guides. Most of us want to fish. This is kind of one-on-one. -on -one. That's why it's so special. You know, that's why the visitor feels special and that's why the watermen starting to understand that this is really meaningful. People care about what I'm doing. Cambridge is probably poised to have uh, kind of the most successful attempt to not only you know preserve or sustain what's here but actually to, to grow it. And because of the economic downturn in the mid-2000s, thankfully most development has stopped. So we have a time to assess our working waterfront, see what is needed in the future. You know, we certainly want to maintain what we've got left here, if at all possible. A lot of it is appreciating the way of life and then figuring out how to mesh that with a lot of the tourism and things like that have come to our area. We're moving forward with an education program we want to start a marine trade school here. Something that can work in the commercial aspect, but also work in the educational aspect. That's the biggest opportunity Cambridge certainly has to integrate the waterfront with what we have going on downtown and to really bring a considerable amount of people here. We have not tapped the reserve of what could be created in this community. The city of Cambridge has come a long way over the years. It's an awesome place for people to come and visit now. The idea of connecting downtown and the uh, and the mouth of the creek is you know, an idea that we need to really develop. It's definitely going to benefit downtown. You know, that's a way that they can grow. We have a lot of vacant warehouses from the packing industry that we could actually turn ourselves into a replica of Eastport City that we could support more of the boating trade. I think we've got a lot of opportunity. It's going to take a lot of motivated people, um, perseverance. We've got to promote a synergy between business community, the museums, and a reason for uh, tourists to stop here. It'll help everything. So we are still trying to create new industries as well as preserve the old ones that we can have economic activity here in the community for people not only to grow up here but to stay here and live. Now what we're looking at is a really young, vibrant city starting to be recognized at the state and, and regional level. Maryland aquaculture is sort of going to be key to making the bay actually the way it used to be. Things are picking up pretty well in the town. It's not perfect by any means, but it's getting better. I've had a wonderful life, and most of it is because I live in Cambridge. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. I say be vigilant, uh, be, be ready, be aware, be involved, and most of the time if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Mm -hmm.